Hey, I'm Rora. I'm Jane. And we are Birds of Clay. And we're here to talk all things Australian pottery and ceramic art. So put your kettle on and let's have a chat. like to pay our respects to the traditional custodians on the lands on which this podcast is recorded. We acknowledge the rich history of art, craft and storytelling that has been occurring for millennia and acknowledge elders past, present and country as provider, protector and guide. Working with clay is intrinsically linked to country and we would not be here without the care and connection that our First Nations peoples have shown for thousands of years on this continent we call Australia. Hey Jane. Hey Rora. Hey Peter. Hi. Hey everyone. <laughs> Today we have a special honoured guest, Peter Berghofer. Yay. Peter's quite an inspirational figure in the um, Toowoomba art scene, I will say for you, Peter. <laughs> um, Peter is obviously from Toowoomba, operating on Guyabal and Jarawa lands. Her work references the notion of traditional vessels while playfully disrupting forms and function. And works with clay also. <laughs> Doing that with ceramics. <laughs> um, yeah, Peter, do you want to expand on that a little bit for us? Yeah, hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's a pretty cool thing that you two are doing. Um, yeah, thank you for giving us a platform to speak about clay. Particularly in the regional space as well. I think it's really exciting. For sure. Um, expand on my practice. Yeah, what do you do? I like clay <laughs> and I turn clay into things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of said all the things in a nice little nutshell, but um, I'm really interested in sort of this push and pull between functional and sculptural objects. And it's mm-hmm. sort of an age old debate. And a lot of people are sort of like, yeah, we've had this conversation before, um, but I guess I'm really interested in it regardless and Mm. so I want to make art about it but sort of considering what that means in a contemporary art context um where can ceramics exist kind of exist in in contemporary art making um and sort of what has led to that thinking I mean it's everything's really open-ended these Mm. days so I guess I'm really um inspired by the open-endedness of ceramic making um, now and, and what we can all do with it and I don't know just really want to make weird little objects <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that totally. are sort of neither here nor there in terms of um, what's made for the home what's made for the gallery and what's both cool things <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of the beauty of clay isn't it you don't there, there really are no limitations mm. I find like there's so many different avenues to explore yeah and well Maybe we're biased, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, we'd also really like to know how you found clay Mm -hmm. as your medium and maybe what were you experimenting with before? Yeah. So clay came to me at university and I never thought that I'd be interested in it. Prior to that, um, I dabbled a bit with clay in private art classes as like a young primary school student, high school student, and then in high school as well. But it was always just like a little module part of something Mm. bigger. Like it was like, we're going to make these objects, but we're not going to be able to fire them. And it's inspired by this. That's not really related and so on and so forth. So I was sort of couldn't see the end Mm. um, possibilities. Uh, And then other than that, my exposure to ceramics was, I don't know, like, everything was brown and yeah. <laughs> and while I, I know now that that's also really exciting because I understand how, um, you know, the, the ceramics from the eighties was achieved and all those fantastic things, but I, I just couldn't see, um, ceramics in a contemporary way until I got to university and entering into the, um, ceramic studio at the university of Southern Queensland and also wanting to be an interior designer, ah. but didn't have um, the means to move to, um, a major city to to study something like that. The only thing I knew was art, and the only thing I was inspired by otherwise was making art. Mm-hmm. And um, we're lucky enough to have a creative arts program at um, UniSQ here in Toowoomba. That's what I signed up for. It was the only thing that made sense. 
ceramic studio there was this um option to make things for spaces and I was like oh wow okay like I can exist in that interior design space but I can also make the objects as well mm. and I was exposed to things like mud Australia and I was like oh okay there's this like thing that's already happening and it's also getting uh, a lot of attention and there's this huge community around it I was like oh, I feel like maybe I can exist in this space Prior to that, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a painter. <laughs> um, so I guess, like, most people's story, I didn't think I was going to be into ceramics, and then I, st like, got exposed to ceramics, and the addiction sort of begun. That was about it. Oh, yeah, we know all about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, your work is the furthest thing from brown pottery. <laughs> <laughs> brown pottery is good, though. So, you know, yeah. I, I don't want that to um, sound like I'm snubbing it. Um, I guess just, like the way things were presented to me, like shut off cases, um, you know, where the ceramics never changed. It was the same things over and over again. They weren't taken care of and it was dusty and just, just a misunderstanding of, uh, of, of the history and the importance of that ceramics, but not seeing every other little avenue at the same time. And, and maybe not seeing your voice yeah, in that, yeah, through yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah, like, exactly. you know, I love a good Hessian press piece of clay yeah, and I knock right on it. You know, yeah. it, it evokes. Yeah. You know, the country markets at Caloundra going with my grandparents and yep. being the spoon holder. And, you know, that stuff's beautiful, but Absolutely. It, it's not necessarily your Language. artistic voice. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly mm. right. Yeah, I didn't see where I could exist in that space until I was exposed to slip casting, probably, at the start. And colours and, yeah, bringing that, that weirdness that I wanted to create in other mediums. I was like, oh, wow, no, no, no this can exist in ceramics too. Um, and there's so many different things I can try and you try and you try and you try and, um, eventually hopefully settle, yeah. um, for something a little bit more specific, mm. which is where I am now. Yeah. All right. Cool. And it's really obvious looking at your work that you do kind of really play with and push those ideas of traditional, mm. traditional ceramics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really true. interesting. <laughs> Super playful as well. Yep. Um, your work kind of evokes joy to like to look at. Is that something that you consciously try and do for the viewer? Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's kind. Um, that's always a nice thing to provide for people. I think playfulness, maybe cheekiness, is sort of yeah. <laughs> what the aim is. I was always, have always been really interested. Like my favourite movie as a kid was um, Child in the Chocolate Factory, oh, Gene yeah. Wilder. But... Um, not so much because it was chocolate and it was colourful, but because there was this edge to it that was a little bit strange and a little bit unsettling. Mm. So maybe those two things together, like the weirdness sort of fronted by cute playfulness, like it's not necessarily about that front facade, it's what's behind it, it's something a little bit obscure. Yeah. People have to question what it is. That um, movie is amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we watched it. I studied environmental science in my first degree, yeah. and we watched it as food politics, as a like, oh, metaphor for industrial yeah. True, though. Industrial um, agriculture, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. And you're right, it totally plays with that candy and pretty colours, yeah. but then also bringing this darkness. and Totally. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I can see that your work does that a bit. Yeah. It's a bit twisted. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, it, I, I don't know if I'm there yet, but I'm also reflecting on sort of the humdrumness of everyday life and maybe that's comes from living regionally maybe mm. and like you're always told in school like you can only really make art about what you know and I was like what do I know like nothing <laughs> well, that's not true, like but, no and yeah. it's not but like as a young person being like oh like you know like I exist at school and I exist at home and when I'm at home it's like there's nowhere to like I can't walk into um town and mm. it's just like trees and you know, there's there's objects in the like you know like it's just everydayness. I'm like, oh, there's there's something unsettling about existing in as a young person. What can feel like nothingness? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and bringing that out, like, what do I know? I know I know my home, and I think that's the same for a lot of people. And wanting to like pull out those <sighs> those joys within that. Yeah, and and knowing that it's lovely to be at home and to exist quietly, and so set, like I don't know. There's always I f art that I find interesting exists between those um, those opposites. Mm, yeah. So 
I guess to to summarize mm-hmm. um, the beauty or the the shiny sugary contrasted with something unusual like yeah kind of you kind of sub- subvert that expectation yeah kind of when you're looking at ceramics it's like oh well, actually it's not what you expect hopefully yeah 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 it feels like it also and i could be totally going down a wrong path here mm-hmm. but it's also that kind of because your work reference domestic a lot yeah and you do make functional work as well as sculptural yeah the domestic sits in that often feminist like feminine mm. Like, you know, you think about 50s, just what you were talking about totally. then, it's that, mm. like, idea of the role, traditional role of, you know, socialised women. Yeah. And how that can be really dark. Yeah. But also kind of mundane and daily, but, yeah, I don't know, it was yeah. just something. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to, it's, I mean, you can't make ceramics without that being part of your practice, because it's, it's, um what lies in the work through the material historically. So that's always come up and, you know, in a, in a craft sphere as well. It's, it's very hard as a um, female person to not delve into those kinds of conversations, whether mm. it's something I'm trying to do or, or not. Um, so without a doubt, yeah, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very interesting and I think, you know, I'm knowing more and more, you know, I've always kind of, you know, feminism has been a really big part of yeah, my journey, but absolutely. it's also I haven't want to haven't wanted to centre it. Yes, yeah. but it keeps creeping yeah, back yeah. in this idea of like, especially making vessels, without a doubt. And yeah. and this is something familiar to both of you that that um, the vessel being always sort of held closely to the the, the feminine form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I suppose well, just it just uh, a figure in general. You know, it's it's very bodily. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, when you talk about the domestic, obviously gender roles come up in that quite yeah. significantly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whether yeah. you're trying to or not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So another thing I've been really curious about, I think the whole time looking at your work since I met you, is what your design process looks like. Mm-hmm. And so do you kind of wake up in the middle of the night with an idea or is it something you sit with and plan out meticulously? Um, yeah, what does it look like for you when you get an idea? I like, I'm a person that likes structure. Um, so, and I guess it comes down to the way that I've been trained as well. Mm-hmm. Training is probably not the best word, but, you know, having gone through a university system and really sort of um, feeling comfortable in a space, it's like we're going to sit down and um, we're going to work out what the ideas are behind the work and then work out what materials and and, um, imagery and and such will help um, showcase those ideas. So I usually start with an idea. I've always had a journal each year, Um, so a lot of sketching, uh, a lot of colour palettes coming to the front, a lot of, um, because I'm referencing the domestic, um, a lot of, you know, close-up shots of bricks or tiles (laughs) or just random stuff. (laughs) Um... And I, I find that process really fun and exciting. Um, and then, you know, also because I'm often referencing um, ceramics historically, you know, like one of my journals, it wouldn't be unusual to find images of Wedgwood vessels, of, um, mm-hmm. you know, colonial vessels, um but that's when it work. It's going well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's when the headspace feels right and the process feels flowing. right. Um, yeah. I've been going through a bit of a making block at the moment, and that that hasn't been happening. And and that's when I'm thrown off a little bit. But have to remind myself that, you know, often when I let go of that, some of that rigidity, the best work comes, or um, the stuff that people respond to more comes out of just like, literally throwing clay at the wall and seeing what happens <laughs> um so it ebbs and flows I guess between um something a little more structured and and not at all uh but yeah there's often lots of little design sketches and and swatches and and all that jazz mm, yeah you you really are a tester <laughs> yeah 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 well I mean I think you're both the same good practice it's test 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 ceramics, yeah. everything. you gotta test everything um so yeah it, it's it's a it's a good headspace for me to sort of um, have that end goal and have worked out how to get there 
mm-hmm. and, and follow that that pathway but allow myself the the flexibility and freedom within that process to change the course yeah very cool yeah so you mentioned um you know you're kind of in a period where you feel like a little bit creatively blocked mm-hmm. how do you how do you approach that and like kind of move through that as an artist to keep making <laughs> yeah. yeah to allow myself the space you know it's okay to have um a week off a couple of weeks whatever i need yeah. but i know that i'm going back to it um and to have due dates that are kind of not possible to get out of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but that might not be something that someone else has set for me it might not be an exhibition yeah. that's coming up that um you know i have to to show up for it could be you know I, I want to make this new body of work or a couple of pieces that are working towards that new body of work by the end of um due dates have always worked for me so um they've continued to exist to aid in in those blocks I guess yeah it's kind of one of those things as a creative you kind of you have to do that for yourself yep. otherwise you're just kind of idle and not really yeah well in my experience, yeah, <laughs> not knowing what I'm working towards. Yeah, you can scare yourself out of it quite easily, I think. Yeah, yeah. totally. I'm kind of in that place right now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I've made this, and I know it's something I want to continue doing, but I kind of don't have any, like, strict deadlines yeah. at the moment, so I yeah. kind of feel like I'm... Yeah, you got to set yourself <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, yeah for it's, sure. It's true. I'm a bit worried about that finishing uni. Yeah. And going, will, That's I, the hardest. will I make... Yeah. When I finish uni, yeah, yeah. You know, like, just all fall over. Like it's an interesting. I think you you, uh-huh. you realize um to each time that it's like just built into you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it just comes back for you, and if you're trying to fight it, you're like, oh yeah, no, maybe I should make that new mug design in my head that I've been thinking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. oh, I'm in the shed now. Oh, maybe I could just pick up that clay and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. My mother-in-law, she's a ceramicist too, and she's like, if you're feeling blocked, just clean. Go to the yes. studio. Oh, just yes, be yes, yes, yes. in the studio. Actually, yes. Totally. Yes. And um, yep. she reckons, like, you'll eventually get to making yep. if you're just cleaning and just being in that space. A smart. That's really good advice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. A, a, a good clean physically for me is like um a a tidy up in my headspace as well yeah and that's like not just ceramic or art practice related it's Mm. there's something about just having everything back in its spot that that creates space in every which way to then start something fresh so Mm. that 100 studio clean also clean your studios dust is uh not good yeah (laughs) Yeah. um but um to then flick back through I always find this at the start of the year or um, at the the start of a new sort of um, period of time after a big body of work or after a Mm. big show to go back through the journal, look at what was, take notes on what worked well, what didn't, Mm -hmm. um, what you want to change, what you want to keep, all that. Um, And just those little those little starts sort of then snowballs into something else. Yeah. And like last night I was just sort of flicking through our powers out at home. So I just flicked through my images on my phone. Mm. I'm like, oh, actually, yeah, maybe what I'm making isn't all trash. (laughs) (laughs) There's something here from two years ago that I forgot about. And I'm like, oh, there's something promising there that maybe I need to come back to. And when I have that block again, I might go back to that little spark and um, push that and, and see what happens. Yeah. And I sort of look back and go, oh, yeah, okay. No, mm-hmm. there, is, there is something there. <laughs> we were actually scrolling through your Instagram Ew. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> we were. We were like, because I only met you, Peter, um, I think it was when I did the Shannon Garson workshop at McGregor yeah, true, in like true, true, true. 2021. Yeah, it's not a super long so, time ago. No, yeah. no. So I was like, there's a lot of history I didn't know. And I was yeah. like going back and, yeah. One thing Jane said this morning was, wow, like Peter's, you know, her feed looks great. She's been posting, you know, so consistently and beautifully for such a long time. So, like, you really, you know, um, goes kind of in with what I said with you being quite inspirational figure oh. around is because you are super consistent and you've been doing it for a long time too. Um, yeah, I just don't know that I could have that, <laughs> like, control. What and are you just talking like, about? I don't know. Like, do you do that? But that's the thing. That's why I said ooh because, like, 
it never when people say those lovely things yeah. to you, you you never quite uh see it in yourself yes so i'm gonna mirror that all back to you oh. <laughs> i think um both of you are very hard working people you wouldn't be making a podcast if you were true <laughs> um but thank you for seeing that um yeah you i mean it does happen where people create um, practices really quickly mm. um and isn't that the beauty of Instagram? I've never, ever had that um, situation in my life. It's it's just always a lot of work yeah. and, and sticking to it. Yeah. Um, and I think and that's the... Sorry. No, just interrupting. No. I think that's the majority of people. I think there's I agree. only mm-hmm. a very small percentage of those people that blow up overnight. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's sometimes a myth yeah. that gets oh, I agree. put into the world that you can just do something and it's breaks all the barriers and it's amazing yeah. and all of a sudden you're successful yeah. rather than put the hard slog in yeah. and work and work and work. And it, mm. I think that's actually, yeah, I think it's a bit of a problem. It's a problem and it's, it's a myth like that, that genius that just mm. knows how to do the thing. And, um, yeah, no, you're right. It is, it is just <laughs> looking away at it. <laughs> um, but enjoying that process, like I've totally. never wanted to, to rush to an end. Like, the end is not the thing, right? It's it's mm. it's doing the thing that we're all excited about, um, and doing it for myself. I guess yeah. has been the key, um, so that you, you're you yeah. I don't know. So you do enjoy it yeah. for yourself. It doesn't feel like it. Well, I mean, it's hard. Ceramics is hard, right? <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> but so it, it's not. A, it's not. A, I've tried to not make it be like a chore. Yeah, yeah. Because like at the end of the day, as much you know heartbreak as it can bring, yeah. it is like really what brings us the most joy as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of that, that strange duality, which is, I think <laughs> what Jane and I kind of focus on a lot yeah. here. It's yeah. like, you know, it really is both. It offers so yeah. much and takes so much. <laughs> <to do. laughs> the highest high and the lowest low. Totally. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, really looking through your feed again, it's like such a, you can really see the development of your work and it kind of reads as such a really, like, a really strong portfolio. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, good work. What surprised you the most, Jane? Um, that you saw? Surface design? When was the, I doing that? Like, <laughs> remind 2017. me. 2017. <laughs> oh, wow. 2017. Yeah, I was like, Peter did surface design. Yeah. Mm. And um, I, it didn't really surprise me, but it just... It was nice to see just that trying things. 17, sorry, I interrupted you. 2017 would have been leaving university <laughs> and being like, oh, I'm going to do everything. Now. Yeah. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> and you've like, for people listening that aren't familiar with Peter's work, since then you've kind of really paired that design back and gone really colour blocky. Yeah. And so I think, is that a choice to make the forms kind of like speak for themselves as well? Yeah, I think so. Um, it was really important for me to like splash pattern and color and um, d- just become really physical with the material at that stage because I was making a lot of color block stuff in a slip cast um, based process and I needed to loosen up mm. and I needed to know I could didn't have to pigeonhole myself I suppose into one specific thing. Um, so it was like, okay, now I'm just going to hand build, which I like hadn't done for most yeah. of university, which is super weak. Cause I was so obsessed with slip casting. Yeah. Um, so I was like throwing together these absurdly, uh, awful vessels, <laughs> 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 clunky as heck, but that was also what was interesting at the time. Yeah. And yeah. it still is like really like organic process space. Mm. Um, and I was like researching farm to table movement and, and why ceramics um, was facing a, re- a really exciting resurgence and still is. Mm. Um, but because there was this, there is the connection from maker to um, the person uh, buying the work and wanting that connection, we're needing those connections. So I was just like, right, well, we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to connect. Make, 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 make. <laughs> um, physical with clay, with the surface application. So that was happening. Mm-hmm. But then I sort of. I suppose lost myself in it and and wanted to uh, create that parallel between the ideas and honing my techniques as well. So yeah, pairing back again and I find myself that I if I give myself too many options, I, I start to lose way with it. If I'm throwing too many too many colors in, too many processes, too many um, mm. surface designs. So um, I find 
freedom in limiting things a little bit. So color palette. Um, I've been really trying to focus at the moment on having a visual language. I mean, maybe it's different when you're looking at your own work, but I, I can go through my images sometime and be like, this could be by different artists. So I'm like, without over commercializing the work, without it, it being to the same each time, mm. what little things in my practice are, are going to be part of my visual language that aren't going to confuse my concepts um, because I'm adding too many things in all the time, changing all the time. But, you know, changing enough to keep it interesting. It's funny you say that, Peter, because I feel like something I've really noticed with your work is that it is cohesive. Mm -hmm. It feels very cohesive to me as a from one artist. I know yeah. it's something I struggle with too, yeah, but yeah. I think it's at uni because you get asked to do all these different things. Maybe, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All my work is so different from each I other. I think it's also just a classic case of we all um, are so close to our own work that yeah. you see things that other it's people true. don't yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, so it's that's true, true actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, our recent, we, us three, mm -hmm. are all in a group exhibition at the moment and I put two different works in it and mm -hmm. I was like, they are so different from <laughs> each other. But they're not, though, be because conceptually, yeah. like they're, they're very touch with what you're saying through your yeah. practice so and I think that's that's more exciting than yeah than yeah and somebody together, took visually. a photo of them and mm -hmm. posted them and I'm like oh that actually yeah. you can kind of tell that I made both yeah that's mm -hmm. weird isn't it yeah for sure yeah. for sure I yeah. think that's what's nice about exhibiting because this is the first time I've exhibited work yeah yeah work <laughs> in my life. yeah so it's been really nice to get that distance yes it puts it in the context that you created it for well yeah. One of the contexts you created yeah, for, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so it creates fresh, well, fresh eyes. Yeah. yeah, even for the person that made it, which is exciting. Yeah, 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 it's good. Are you excited to see people interpret your work, like in a gallery space? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> also the artist way. Put it in the put it. I in think the, it was hard because I was way. also on the install. Yeah, I'm true. very nervous about how all, all the artists are going to feel about <laughs> their work and how it's displayed, but. I've had good feedback, which is good, but yeah. there was a night of no sleep. Oh, no. Worry. <laughs> no, you know what we're like. It's it's hard putting together ten ceramicists work. Yeah. Diverse in a, work. In a in yeah. a space mm. that isn't probably is is a different kind of space. Yeah. 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 For um, context, um Rosalie Gallery at Gumbungee. Did we yeah. mention that? Yeah. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, in the last episode I think. Oh, maybe. Uh, I don't know, maybe we didn't. <laughs> Either yeah. which way. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a gallery run by Toowoomba Regional Council, yeah. and um, yeah, a lovely little gallery out thirty minutes northwestish. Yes. From yeah. Toowoomba. Driving yeah. out there, I was kind of thinking, where am I going? <laughs> I have no service, so oh, I can't no. check. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is the right way. Yeah. <laughs> we love our regional galleries, though. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. Such bread and butter for um, regional makers. It was. Um, the, one of the most important milestones for me was mm. um, showing in our regional spaces. Yeah. In the region, so, yeah. And yeah. hard, really hard working arts workers in our region. Like, Absolutely. Underfunded. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> overworked. Like, underpaid. <laughs> I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Galleries what, run by one person. You know, yeah. It's wild. Yeah. 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 You don't realise how much um, work something like that is until you've yeah. um, been in... In, involved in putting together something like yeah. that and you're like ha 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 mm. oh, wow yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and you know there's lots of support around yeah and but it shows you I think in a regional area how important an arts community yes. is yeah mm -hmm. and how everyone's supporting each other is yeah is really the only way we can make it work yeah for sure arts facilitators are angels yeah, yeah. what's it so you've actually you've shown regionally mm -hmm. and in the city mm -hmm. so how do they like what's that contrast like what's it like showing in the city and also asking you two questions in one <laughs> <laughs> um how did you feel like moving from regional exhibitions and then putting yourself out there for city shows home shows or local shows are really lovely mm -hmm. because I suppose the people that are most familiar with my work are still locally. Yeah. And so that it feels like home and people coming to support. Um, whereas Brisbane opportunities or wider, like oftentimes I can't um, get to openings. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. Um, so I can't see how people are reacting to the work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but shows, openings in Brisbane are a little bit more quiet. So oh, yeah, really? Maybe, but not, not in terms of um, the amount of people coming. Yeah. But maybe more so just the my interactions are different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because not everyone's, I guess, familiar with you yeah. and familiar with your work, so there's maybe not as much. I guess less so. pals. Less yeah. pals. Less pals. Um, but that's that's the that's the new new stage that I'm at. I'm so it's like branching yeah. out and yeah. I guess I don't really know how to answer it. Mm. That's it's, okay. It's, it's never it's never part of my consideration in making the work. Yeah. Um, having shows or opportunities is just a major fantastic um uh bonus bonus <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah every every next little thing is is just as important and just as exciting uh yeah i don't know i don't think i answered that at all <laughs> <laughs> okay. i think it's i think yeah you did I mean, yeah. kind of on the back of that, um, you have been a finalist in a couple of other yes, prizes recently. Have. Congratulations. Thank you. Well Amazing. deserved. <laughs> um, how, how have you felt with that process? Like, have you been entering art prizes mm. no. for a while? Is it new? <laughs> Is it... <laughs> Feel free to be honest about no, art prizes. No, no, no. Um, no, it's, it's, um, was a goal of last year. I probably did less exhibitions and more uh, entering into art prizes and entered quite a few and got a, into just like a small amount. And uh, that's the other thing, I guess we don't see how many things people are applying for yeah. and, um, the very limited amount that you do get into. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been a nice process learning the ropes there, um, and doing different applications, um, yeah, it's been really cool. It's just exciting to see my work amongst those of people I've been looking up to for a really long time and learning about my work within those spaces mm-hmm. and being like, oh, like I, I can see um, where I need to develop my work conceptually and technically. Um, and I can also see how far I have come in yeah. the last few years. Uh, but applying for pr- prizes I've been wanting to do for years, but either haven't felt like my work has been ready mm-hmm. or just not creating the time for it, yeah. which has been pretty, what can be pretty disappointing because yeah. um, I guess my priorities can be a little bit warped sometimes and not, not in terms of uh, what's more important broadly, but what's what I've been wanting to achieve. Yeah. Um, so I, I've, I tried to flip that on its head and, and um, learning to, say no to some things that I do have that space to a- a- apply for the prizes. Mm, cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's more it for me. Um, getting to see my work in that context, not necessarily, um, winning anything, uh, and what that yes. means. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Sure, I want to totally. echo your excitement. <laughs> it's also exciting, I guess, for all the artists around you, you know, from a small town, seeing, you achieve and apply and it's like really exciting oh thank you it is it makes it seem possible yeah yeah and i think your work on the back of that is also incredibly strong and you deserve every place that you have absolutely and you are competing (laughs) with those people who've been through national art school all those yeah and they you you know a lot of them shortlisted have also maybe been shortlisted for that particular prize like a few times so Um, it's great to see your name in those lists with those people. Yeah. Thanks. You totally deserve <laughs> to be there. <laughs> and I want to also say something I mentioned to Jane um, when we were talking about interviewing you was that, you know, all all through my time at university, mm-hmm. I was looking at your work and it, you know, kind of fueled me to think, oh, no, it is possible yep. to pursue ceramics outside of you know, yeah. this facility and yeah. the facilities that the uni offers. Yeah. And, like, also really cool to see you just, like, going for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I probably would have pursued it without, you know, you and Dan just, like, yeah. going out there and doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. it's nice. Super yeah. influential. Thank you. It's kind of of you to say that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's weird too. <laughs> you never think that that's happening, but, um, yeah, I've always had like really special role models like that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that's what keeps us all turning and moving. Yeah. Yeah, it does here. for sure. Um, yeah, Dan Elborn was the same for me as well, being like, oh, like not mm. only is someone making this work in ceramics, but in art in general. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if that was possible for me, but maybe it is. And this person's putting in a lot of hard work. Yeah. And yep. um, maybe if I put in that hard work, I can do some really cool things as well. Yeah. So, yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing work ethic, both, yeah. of, both oh, of you. Like, yeah. So good. I don't know if mine goes near Dan's at all, but um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not sure if we've mentioned this, but Peter... Is also teaching yeah. at the University of Southern Queensland and works in the technician role. Yes. Looking after kilns. Thank goodness yes. <laughs> looking after our kilns. Um, but T- Peter taught me in second year. Yeah, I did. And you showed me <laughs> that slip casting could be cool. Yes. Yes. Because I was like Level industrial <laughs> slip casting and had that terrible thrower's view. Uh-huh. Of slip mm-hmm. casting, but you brought it to us in a really creative way yeah. and a really interesting way, and made me realise it's a lot of work. Slip casting. Oh god, it's hard. <laughs> it's not. It's not <laughs> this like simple. Some recognition. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, thank you, Peter, and I think um, you're doing an amazing job teaching. I'm seeing the work the first years are doing, mm. and um, yeah, it's amazing. So oh, thanks. Um, yeah, you, that was my first semester. Uh, teaching like that in that format in that capacity institutionally um so that's nice I feel like <laughs> there's a lot I still need to iron out and it's it's happened without me um thinking that it would happen um mm-hmm. some circumstances aligned and um yeah I had to step into that space which is terrifying and exciting at the same time because I still feel I am still very early in my career Mm -hmm. and um, so teaching in that capacity can be incredibly intimidating and I take it very seriously, maybe too seriously. Um, So I'm glad that you're saying there was some joy in that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Even though it was slip casting's hard, maybe I'm making it harder. No, don't (laughs) Um, be be silly. Like I think (laughs) think you do – I think you're really hard on yourself. Yes. Which, um, are you guys hard on yourself? Yeah, yes, we are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone out there hard on themselves? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure of it. <laughs> yeah, but I think, yeah, you did get thrown in. You don't have a teaching background. No. No one at no, university no, 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 no. does have a teaching not background. In a, not in a formal way. No, 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 but you've really, you're a natural teacher and you, okay. you do bring a good balance of taking it seriously but also play and fun. So, yes, I think you're doing good. Poor slip casting though, hey. I didn't understand that headspace when I um I went into it. I was like, wow, this is a cool process. Like how interesting and funky mm. and um I wasn't exposed to commercially made molds, which can also be really interesting and you can mm-hmm. also play with the conventions there, yep. which we're seeing a lot of. Um but I was like, Oh, it's just another way of making making objects. It mm-hmm. it didn't get presented to me with some of the historical baggage. Yeah, like um, old potters yeah, running it down. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And like it did, it did, um, it was a lot of hard work. Yeah. To the point where I was like, I need to have a break from this. And it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a smaller portion of my practice now, but one that I still very much love and, and love going back to. Um, but yeah, I just saw it as a way of, like a vehicle for color staining clay yeah which was what I was really like had my eye on Mm -hmm. I was also watching Dan make really complicated molds oh yeah yep um be like cool 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 this is pretty legit you can take it like pretty far yeah so much detail but for me yeah making really soft fine Mm -hmm. um functional wares um yeah so I, I guess I didn't see it um in ways that other people were so I try and when I teach it, because it's just a core part of um, our program at USQ, UniSQ, mm-hmm. um, like, yeah, how do I, how do I um, bring that same journey for others so that maybe there's someone like me in, in the class that um, doesn't see the potential of ceramics? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of, 
I will say that I didn't see the potential. <laughs> you know, when I started uni, I wanted to draw. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I was there for drawing. Yeah. And ceramics was just like, oh, a bonus studio that I get to totally. learn. Yeah. And then, yeah, it all changes when you get your first work out of the kiln. Absolutely. Is that what happened for you? Um, first, <laughs> first object out of a mold. Okay. Uh, and then the kiln, of course. Yeah. It was the demolding that the really did it for you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, the kiln is magic though, isn't it? I said to someone recently, it's like, it's a bit corny, but it's the closest thing to that feeling of Christmas as a kid. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's like yeah. Adult, yeah. adult sense of magic uh -huh. <laughs> and the unknown and um, that Pandora's box sort of thing. And it's a bit Alchemy. adrenaline based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so yes. Oh, very exciting. Um, another thing we wanted to touch on while you're here is you're quite well travelled and you, <laughs> you know you are. Well, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> and you've been to a lot of places, you've done some residencies. Um, so yeah, for us who don't, don't know what that's like, mm -hmm. can you tell us about like that process of doing residency and also where, where you've been and what's your favourite? Yeah. I laugh at well travelled because I hadn't been overseas before um, the big trip I did in 2019 mm. and I haven't done heaps of travel since. So, um, yeah, it was a really special time. Mm. I the University of Southern Queensland offers this really fantastic scholarship, the Belmain French Appreciation Travelling Scholarship. And not to bring up Dan again. <laughs> <laughs> We're all obsessed. Um, Dan and uh, his partner, uh, Laura, who's a theatre maker, and um, her colleagues uh, also uh, travelled on this scholarship, uh, plus many more prior to us. And I was like, wow, those guys are so hardworking and so smart and mm -hmm. so achieving in their uh, practices, but also their studies. I was like, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> imagine doing something like that. I've never travelled overseas before, barely within Australia as well. Yeah. So it was something so far out of my reach mentally. Yep. Um, and so it's really cool because they did or maybe still do. I haven't looked into it recently. Uh, you could probably like one of the only scholarships you could apply for once you graduated. Mm. <laughs> um, it's totally unreal. And I remember Dan being like, Hey, like you haven't applied for it yet. This would be the final year. Like, I think you should probably do it. Are you going to do it? I was like, ah. <laughs> imagine if I got it, like, I don't know how I would navigate traveling solo. So for a bit of context, it's, um, Belmain French Appreciation Travelling Scholarship. So um, Mr. Belmain was a huge advocate for the university, but also uh, France mm -hmm. and wanted to uh, unite those two things. Yeah. And um, so when he passed or I, I believe when he passed, a lot of money was donated to the university for several different things, but this scholarship was one of them. Cool. And uh, so it's to, to further your education, um, in France uh, for 12 months. Mm -hmm. So I applied for it and got through to the interview round and then got it. And I remember getting, uh, yeah, <laughs> I remember getting the letter in um, the mail of all things. I wonder if they still do that. <laughs> <laughs> and reading this and being like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> like pure fear. Terror. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of having to travel overseas alone. Like, no one had ever shown me before. Yeah. Like, my parents weren't travellers in that way. Um, we hadn't, didn't have the access to money to do mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, it was so unusual to me. Um, and so to do it alone for the first time for 12 months, I was like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, didn't tell people for a good while. Um, and anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I got my head around it. Uh, uh, started saving for 12 months. Um, and then jumped on a plane, traveled with my partner for three weeks, which was a really beautiful thing to ease me into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just did a round of residencies, which is just so amazing that the university provided, um, the scholarship to, to myself and, and others in that format. Um, 
uh, rather than it being um, sort of an exchange to another university. Yeah, um, kind of like a lot of freedom. So much freedom, mm. um, but like the the, be- the best kind. I think um, that was the format that I needed uh, residencies to yeah. um, be outside of that formal education but to still be learning, Mm -hmm. to be around people from other countries, to understand the history of ceramics from those people. But the the place I was visiting, so I was in France um, mostly, I um, did um, AIR, AIR, (laughs) Artisan Residence Mm -hmm. uh, Valerice Mm -hmm. in the south of France. um, And I was there for the Atelier Tremplin program, which was a three-month stint. So it was my longest residency. Yeah. Uh, And that was amazing. Like, Mm. I look back on that time with such joy. Um, The feeling of being able to make (laughs) for that length of time every day without having to work uh, is an absolute privilege. Yeah, wow. Um, So, yeah, Valerie's was incredible, uh, gritty. And um, oh, real. there's a lot of history there too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, a lot of history, of course, with Picasso and the Medora factory, or mm-hmm. Medora pottery. Um, but what was more interesting to me was this little micro um, version of France in the south of France, um, sort of stuck in um, the the history of Picasso, but also this very real version of living over there. Mm-hmm. Um, very multicultural, which felt very odd for the south of France, because if you just go over to um, the town nearby, it's very, like, yachting oh, um, yeah. English expats. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's like the tourist version very, of the French Riviera. Very right? touristy, yeah, yeah. but then you jump on this train for, like, eight minutes and you're in Valerice, which is just, like real people living their life yeah um so for me that was far more eye-opening and interesting and um yeah I met some fantastic artists I very quickly realized that residencies are about the people you meet Uh more than the work that you make okay um I I really dug into what I wanted my practice to be about during that time but um yeah, it was just exciting to meet other people and, and learn from them both about life and ceramics. Mm-hmm. Um, so that uh, residency was really fantastic. I then um, headed off uh, to Studio Fair, I believe, after that, which uh, isn't um, ceramic focus per se. It's um, art-based. A lot of writers go there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's run by um, Colin and Julia, who um, offer their beautiful home that they're renovating to makers of all kinds, artists of all kinds. And so there, um, I wasn't making ceramics, but I was redoing my website and thinking about my work and all Mm. sorts of things. It was super refreshing. Um, yeah. And then I'm getting really into details. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Babbling something excessively. Um, Studio Fair, and then I headed towards the centre of France to do um, Mason uh, Salvadore. Um, They've recently changed their name to Casa Julfa, I believe, and that was really cool. I spent... It rained the whole time. (laughs) I think it was the wrong season to be in that area. Yeah. But it was fine because I was there with one other artist, Johan, who was absolutely gorgeous, Mexican um, ceramic maker. And we just had a, a, a grand old time. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, we sat in a little garage studio that leaked and and laughed about things. And, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Just a lot of also, like, soaking up everydayness there as well. Just, like, walking to the supermarket, walking everywhere, which mm-hmm. is not something we can do here in Toowoomba. No. Yeah. Super often. Mm-hmm. Um, just checking out galleries, nearby galleries, taking photos, just easing into <laughs> quietness. Yeah. And then after that, I went back to Valerie's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just wild. Like, I, I will never be able to do something like this again without such a big scholarship. And I worked my butt off from like the age of 14 saving money for something I just didn't realize it would be this yeah um who would have thought um so I went back to Valerie to do their month-long program um and met a wonderful group of 
um, women artists there. The stars just really align with residencies. It's super weird. And mm. I hear everyone talk about it in the same way, um, where just the right people at the right time gather and mm -hmm. you learn things that you didn't realize you needed to learn. And sometimes it's like uncomfortable things too, like yeah. living with a group of artists in really close quarters. Um, oh, it sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> that specific yeah, part. <laughs> yeah. And you're all thinking about art and you're in historical yep. places and discussions are happening and, mm. you know, big things in the world are happening. It was on the cusp of um, COVID-19 yeah. and a lot of things happening politically in America mm -hmm. and often um, residencies, you're meeting a lot of American people. Um, so, so many really important discussions happening, mm -hmm. which was awesome. And... Uh, yeah, like having to cook in front of people. <laughs> it's always weird because I'm terrible at it. And... I feel like we've got that Australian, like, <laughs> oh my goodness, all these people overseas have these beautiful historic yeah, kind totally. of... They have cuisine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have Vegemite. Yeah, <laughs> which I was craving. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and then um, I was a little bit naughty and snuck over to Denmark after that. I did a month in um, London, actually just as a, as a break for Christmas, cool. stay with a friend, uh, and just like, just kept going back to the V&A. I was going to say, did you go to the V&A? <laughs> yeah. Classic. What's the V&A? Oh. Victorian Albert Museum. Oh. Um, so just like, like, like floors and floors of different, um, periods of art. Cool. And the top floor is all ceramics. Oh. I've never seen that many ceramics in my life. And that was the other thing, like going overseas and, and seeing the ceramics mm. we've been looking at through images that we mm. don't have access to over here and like just room after room of objects like and pretty much chronologically as well wow uh, for ceramics up until you get to the contemporary um room and just looking up and um seeing the edmund deval like mm. installation yes. like every little corner was ceramics and you're like uh. mm. um and the va is amazing because it's not just fine art yeah it's yes they're really interested in collecting cultural Correct. objects. Oh, yeah. sweet. So it's functional, it's outfits. Like when I went, there was this amazing exhibition on um, the history of kind of subcultures. Mm -hmm. And they had like full raver outfits from oh, the 90s. So oh, and yeah. like just really, really, it's definitely one of the most interesting places I've been. Yeah. It's well, amazing. Let's go business trip. You do a, resi <laughs> you do a residency at the VNA. I know. That's the big dream. That's the that's dream. The big dream. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool space, and it's like neck, like you, you just have access, like you, you turn to one side and you're seeing all the Wedgwood vessels and and whatnot. Mm. Uh, so yes, that's the that's that would be the the big the big bang, I think. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> um, and then, but also like teaming that with going to the British Museum and being like, wow, I am so unaware of the history of objects and the dark history and, um, you know, like seeing, um, indigenous Australian objects in a space like that and it being a little bit disorientating and a bit, little bit ugly and yeah. very uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And going overseas and like making work about, um, you know, like traditional French ceramic objects and questioning whether that was the right thing to do or the mm -hmm. wrong thing to do. And then also like coming to terms with like, I'm going overseas and doing this magic thing and, and like making work about French ceramics and mm -hmm. never paying that same respect to Australian history and, and sort of, you know, about everything Australian history, including ceramics, has this dark uh, foundation. And mm. so then agreeing with myself to come back and learn more about that history and, and make work hopefully in a respectable way about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know how we got onto that tangent, but <laughs> museums, um, yeah, big eye opener. Then went to Denmark. Yes, Denmark, mm, Denmark. <laughs> which cool. was amazing. So I went to um, Gulergo there and did the um, project network symposium, which um, gathers uh, recent graduates from all over the world mm. uh, to do a six week program, um, and uh, they're heavily based on research there at Galego, um, or GG uh, for short. Um, so, you know, uh, exposure to wood-fired kilns, soda firing, uh, 3D printer, um, a really well-established studio yeah, that, wow. that functions with assistants and a manager and all that lovely stuff. Um, and just making around some really intelligent 
intelligent young people um, mm. coming out of their programs with a bang. Yeah. And being like, okay. And being one of them too. Yeah. I, so. <laughs> I don't know. They're very intimidating. <laughs> um, just really knowledgeable folk and, um, ha- yeah, had a blast there. And just the, 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 um, the lodging there is fantastic. It's set on an apple farm and you can just go for slow walks and, yeah, just really special. Just a very uh, important time for me that Transformative. I don't take for granted. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think so, but more so on a human level. Yeah. <laughs> um, do I know... Did I know about myself much before I went overseas? No. <laughs> did I come back with a little bit more knowledge? Yeah. A yeah. little bit, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I think to... Um, I mean, long story short, incredibly um, fortunate to have um, spent that time overseas um, to allow me the the headspace and the time to really dig into my practice, to um, push myself technically, conceptually, and to meet a lot of really fabulous people who sort of guided me um, down several different new and important pathways. It was fantastic. I definitely recommend... um, ceramic artist to, to, to go down that route um, and to, to find some funding to get yourself there. Yeah. Something to look into. Yes. I know Jane's oh, keen on residency. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's special. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the um, grant that you got is now for graduate students. I was looking. So, yeah. Specifically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. You have to be a graduate student, yeah. like a PhD. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. I'll have yeah, to look yeah. into it. Yeah, it it's uh, it changed. I think quite a bit um, with the pandemic, obviously, because uh, it put, got put on hold. Quite a yeah. complicated scholarship to follow through when there's restrictions uh, in terms of travel. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. You could you could go when you were, I think, uh, only in your second year of studies, oh, and wow. take sort of a year off in between. Um, but I can see how um, it's a really um, nourishing trip for someone that's sort of um, in between study and about to enter into industry and sort of bridging that gap. So that's good, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Excellent. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us a bit about what's coming up for you and what you're working on now? Absolutely. Uh, so, well, we've uh, been working on our group show Terrain at mm-hmm. Rosalie Gallery, which has been a fantastic way to start the year. Always nice to celebrate um, local ceramics and um you know regional spaces between that i've been um chipping away at a really exciting uh group show in brisbane through paper boat press um and i'll be alongside some people i've been looking up to for quite a while now so it feels like a big milestone exhibition i'm really thankful uh, to kylie for having me in the space very much looking forward to it um and it's come at an interesting time with some of that maker's block. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, f- feeling a little bit um, nervous and excited at the same time, I guess. Big congrats to you on yeah, that. That's really you. exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's, I mean, maybe this goes back to your question about shows in Brisbane. Maybe I wasn't seeing the full scope of my emotions <laughs> by the question. But, um, yeah, I, I guess imposter syndrome creeps in a little bit maybe in some of those art prizes too where you're like I feel like I just lucked out somehow Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I I can't see how my um work stands up in in that type of space with that um caliber of artists but uh it's probably not a kind way to think about your work so I'm looking forward to um I don't know owning it yeah Yeah. owning it Peter yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) but also it shows like your humility as well as a person it's not always a bad thing unless I guess we frame it that way <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. and that it stops us from doing things yeah. I think I think it's really normal to doubt and have that play between doubt and then pushing yourself out and then going oh but I think mm. yeah when it starts blocking you from putting yourself out into things that's mm. when it's a problem yeah no no you've always got to do the thing and, yeah. and um learn from the thing and look back on your achievements and um yeah it's like when you you allow yourself to be like hey like what would 12 year old me think about this be pretty they'd be pretty amazed yeah (laughs) Yeah. that's lovely it's always a nice um practice to go back to yeah Yeah. that question yeah yeah if there was something you could tell your 12 year old self Mm -hmm. what would you what would you tell peter 12 so i would have been in year 
seven. Seven, year six and seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Keep living your best, best and less board short wearing self. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, keep being creative. Um, Excellent. Yeah, just keep keep doing the thing. Worry less about what other people think of you. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably good advice that we can take today as well. Yeah, it, it, it comes back to get you, doesn't it? When you think you sort of manage that um, that headspace creeps back in. So maybe twelve year old me would be like, care less, <laughs> and I would yeah. say also care less, and ha ha ha. <laughs> yeah, it's so up and down that isn't it? Yep. I think, it's and I think that's our whole creative journey mm. is we have yep. those like, yeah, I'm doing all right, and then like, oh, totally. everything I make is terrible, and everyone thinks I'm gonna, you know, I'm a fool. Yeah, but no one ever does. It's no. just how you feel about yourself. Everyone's too worried, worried about themselves. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. what my mum used to tell me. It's so true. Mm. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. yeah. It is true. Well, Peter, <laughs> thank you so much for being our first guest. And, you know, we're both so grateful to you in this space and out of this space for teaching us and inspiring us and... Yeah, just pioneering, being an amazing <laughs> ceramic artist in Toowoomba. <laughs> very kind words. Um, probably, yeah, very generous, very generous. Um, I think it's all a collaboration and we're all working together. Um, and if we're not doing that, um, we need to be and raising each other up. So um, thank you both in the same way, teaching me, uh, for including me uh, and for doing wonderful things like this, uh, to allow opportunities for people to, to keep making and to be talking about making. So it's uh, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Ah, oh, thanks, Thank Peter. You. <laughs> thanks, Peter. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. We hope you enjoyed. You can find us on Instagram at birdsofclay underscore podcast. Please feel free to send us any questions or comments. And if you could leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening on, that would be amazing. We'll see you next time.